Good morning. I'm Lynn Dale, and I'm your worship associate here at Northwest Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Sandy Springs, Georgia. Here we seek to create loving community, inspire joy and spiritual growth, and support courageous action. All are welcome as we together journey towards justice and equity by learning, caring, and acting together. We especially welcome any newcomers and visitors we have today. I hope you'll join us after worship for coffee hour from the comfort of your own homes. You can just stay right here when the service ends. We will begin coffee hour as soon as the postlude is over. If you haven't already, now is a great time to grab whatever materials you'll need to light your own chalice. If you'd like that to be part of your worship experience today. Each week brings us closer to finishing the building renovation and completion of the new patio behind Subramanian Hall. We're planning to lay the patio paver stones next Saturday, September 26th, and we're relying on volunteers to help us with this project, please. We need strong workers for two shifts, one from nine to noon and the other from 12.30 to four. Food and water will be provided and chairs will be set up in Subramanian Hall when you need a break. Please bring gloves, hats, by doing this ourselves. So please notify Constance Derricks or Lil Wolf if you can help. Details are in the newsletter and will be emailed out later this week as well. Please, 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 please volunteer. As always, kindly set your phones to worship mode. We can't hear you, but we think that you'll enjoy an hour free from distractions. And feel free to check on, in on your social media to let your friends and family know about this place of caring that you've found. We love to share the good news as our congregation is an exciting place to be. And although we cannot be together physically today to greet each other with hugs, high fives, smiles, and words of love, we are together in spirit and each and every one of us is welcome. And now, let us prepare for worship with our esteemed director of music, Dr. Philip Rogers. Thank you, Dr. Philip, and good morning. I am the Reverend Mr. Sanders, and I am honored to serve as the senior minister here at Northwest Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Sandy Springs, Georgia. I call us to worship this morning with a poem by the Reverend Angela Herrera called How Poets Pray. What do you do with the secret verses of your heart? with your need for redemption, the story without words, with paradoxical truths too private and too nuanced to share that cannot be printed or spoken aloud. You weave their energy into a poem, 
carefully, carefully over and under and through luminescent strands that cannot be unteased until the poem is shot through with light from an unknown origin. And you whisper it into the dark. Breeze forms delivered into the deep. And now I am so happy to turn it over to our own Harper Bush, who will be lighting our chalice. We light this chalice, symbol of our purpose, to bring more love and justice into the world. We light this chalice, knowing our beloved community is dispersed across communities, not bound by walls but connected through the web of life. It's okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Harper and Jill, for lighting our chalice for us this morning. Sometimes that works better than others, doesn't it? I have trouble with mine sometimes too. Ms. Adia, our, um, our Director of Religious Education, Adia Udofia, Fields Udofia, is not, she's not feeling well today. And so uh, I, she sent to me the introduction to our Time for All Ages, and I'm going to read to you what Adia sent to me. For our story for all ages, we're going to learn a, more about activism. There are so many ways that we can stand up against injustice or things that are unfair in our community. What cause or social justice issue is really important to you? Please share your thoughts in the chat if you would like to. The things that just get you going. Our story for today is entitled A for Activism. This book explores our UU values of community, equality, and justice in a fun way by using each letter of the alphabet to explore social justice issues in our community. And so maybe the ones that you mentioned in the chat will be mentioned in our book as well. And so now, David will, uh, our own David Morgan will be starting a video that Miss Adia created for us today. A is for activism. A. A is for activist, advocate, abolitionist, ally, actively answering a call to action. Are you an activist? B. B is for banner, bobbing in the sky, billowing in the breeze, because you're not shy. C. C is for co-op, cooperating cultures, Creative counter to corporate vultures. Oh, and cats. Can you find the cats? D. Little d, democracy. More than voting, you'll agree. Dictators detest it. Donkeys don't get it. But you and me, we demand equality. E. Equal rights. Black, brown, or white. Clean and healthy is a right. Every place we live and play, environmental justice is the way. F. F is for feminist, for fairness in our pay, for freedom to flourish and choose our own way. G. G is for grassroots, sprouting from below sharing nutrients and the waters flow. Below the surface, we're all connected. Stronger together, we grow. H. H is for healthy food. A human right. Honeydew, jicama, nature's delight. Hummus, hot dogs, Havarti cheese. Hot dogs? Yes, healthy hot dogs, please and pizza. I, indigenous and immigrant, together we stand tall. Our histories are relevant. An injury to one is an injury 
to all. J. J is for justice. Yay for justice. Ja Jing Jung. Juanita. Jamal. Justice for the janitors. Justicia for all. K. Kings are fine for story time. Knights are fun to play. But when we make decisions, we will choose the people's way. L. LGBTQ. Love who you choose, because love is true. Liberate your notions of limited emotions. Celebrate with pride our links of devotion. M. Megaphones marching. Movimiento music. Hip, hip, hooray! It must be May Day. N. N is for no. No, no, no. Yes to what we want. No to what must go. No, no, no. O. Open minds operate best. Critical thinking over test. Wisdom can't be memorized. Educate. Agitate. Organize. P. 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 Peace March. Pro. Pro. Protest. Pow. Pow. Power to the P. P. People. Yeah. Q is for question. Questioning coercion. Querying qualities counter false assertions. R. Radical Reds, the headline said. Ruinous rioters, the rumors spread. Rabble-rousing riffraff. Really? S. S is for sun, soul, solar, superstar, stellar power, fuels all life not just flowers, energized homes, cars, and showers. Silly, selfish scoundrels sucking on dinosaur sludge? Boo! Hiss! T. T is for trans. For trains, tiaras, tulips, tractors, and tigers, too. Trust in the true. The he, she, they that is you. You. You is for weekends. You is for workers' rights. Wait, that's not you. That's double you. You is for union. Union, yes. V. V is for vox. What? Did you say fox? No. I said vox. Did you say box? No. Vox. Rocks? Blocks? Socks? Vox. Vox of the people. Voice of the populi. Better go see the letter D. W. Wondrous world. Wondrous we. We cannot be whole. We cannot be free. Unless we delight in diversity. X. X is for Malcolm, as in Malcolm X. History's lessons can be complex. Remember Parks. Remember King. Remember Malcolm. And let freedom ring. Y. Y is for you and youth. Your planet, your rights, your future, your truth. Why is for yes. Yes, yes, yes. Z. Z is for Zapatista, of course. I've got two poems for you this morning. The first one is called For the Consideration of Poets by Haki Mudati. Where is the poetry of resistance, the poetry of honorable defiance? 
unafraid of lies from career politicians and businessmen, not respectful of journalists who write. Officials speak void of educated thought without double search or subsurface questions that war talk demands. Where is the poetry of doubt and suspicion? Not in the service of state bishops and priests, not in the service of beautiful people and late night promises, not in the service of influence, incompetence, or academic clown talk. The second poem is called We Are Not Responsible by Harriet Mullen. We are not responsible for your lost or stolen relatives. We cannot guarantee your safety if you disobey our instructions. We cannot endorse the causes or claims of people begging for handouts. We reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. Your ticket does not guarantee that we will honor your reservations. In order to facilitate our procedures, please limit your carrying on. Before taking off, please extinguish all smoldering resentments. If you cannot understand English, you will be moved out of the way. In the event of a loss, you'd better look out for yourself. Your insurance was canceled because we can no longer handle your frightful claims. Our handlers lost your luggage and we are unable to find the key to your legal case. You were detained for interrogation because you fit the profile. You are not presumed to be innocent. If the police have reason to suspect, you are carrying a concealed wallet. It is not our fault if you were born wearing a gang color. It is not our obligation to inform you of your rights. Step aside, please, while our officers inspect your bad attitude. You have no rights we are bound to respect. Please remain calm or we could not be held responsible for what happens to you. Herein ends the reading. No coming, no going, no
Good morning. I'm Valerie Johnson, a member of Northwest Care Corps team, and I'm here to bring you the joys and sorrows this morning. Uh, I invite those of you who are joining us virtually to use the chat box to share your joys and sorrows. So joys and sorrows, this is our time in this space to honor these sacred moments and milestones. So for our ritual, we have water and we have river stones. Smooth and heavy in our hands, these river stones symbolize life's pleasures and times of ease. They also symbolize life's burdens and times of heaviness. So the water in our bowl is a precious natural resource. We use it sparingly, uh, reminding us of the preciousness of each life and its unique journey. This first stone is a stone of sorrow for John Wienert. He had a fall down some stairs early Tuesday, and later he underwent surgery uh, for severe head trauma at Wellstar North Fulton. He's still in the ICU, and he's expected to be moved from there very soon. Um, no calls to Penny at this time. Uh, she'll share an address with us for cards really soon. In the meantime, please send John and Penny healing prayers and thoughts. This is a stone of joy for Vita Tucker. She recently had surgery for breast cancer and had been waiting for two weeks to hear back from her oncologist. And he called this past week with great news that she does not need chemotherapy. She's so relieved and happy as you can imagine, as we all are. This stone is for Vita. This stone is for Richard McComas. Richard was not feeling well following a routine visit to his doctor and he was hospitalized this week, Tuesday through Thursday. Donna said he was checked out by his cardiologist and he seems to be fine. Yes, he's feeling fine and he's glad to be home and that's a joy. This is a stone of both sorrow and joy. Uh, sorrow over the passing of the Honorable Ruth Bader Ginsburg on Friday and joy that we had her for as long as we did on the Supreme Court fighting for so many of the things that are important to us as you use. She inspired so many. And this last stone, I'm gonna place in the water for all of us with joys and sorrows that remain unspoken. So now I'd like to share with you some excerpts from a meditation on the coming of autumn. It's by the Reverend Josh Pawelek of Unitarian Universalist Society East in Manchester, Connecticut. Autumn comes this week. Here and there among the green leaves on branches of trees, a sliver of gold, a spot of red, a dollop of brown. The final harvest of the year begins. Apples and pears have ripened for, pick, for picking as the migrating flocks slowly head off on their time-honored southern roots. May we on this morning and throughout the coming autumn look back on who and where we've been and on all we've come through to be here now. And as the leaves begin to fall, may we grieve well for all we have lost. And in grieving well, may we prepare ourselves to receive the new life that is always emerging. Amen. Well, we could sit in silence for the next few minutes <clears throat> and let that performance be the whole sermon, as far as I'm concerned. And we will have truly been to church. <laughs> That was a performance uh, that was on Britain's Got Talent, lest we forget that the Black Lives Matter movement is a global phenomenon with impact more far reaching than we sometimes understand. I will say from my, on my end, the sound wasn't 
wasn't great on that and that's okay that that is just a thing that's going to happen sometimes on live zoom worship and there's nothing we can do about it if that was the case for you i encourage you after the service today to just go to youtube it can be a, as easy as putting in britain's got talent blm it will be what comes up the group is called diversity the art of the resistance powerful beautiful brutal and life-changing truly the art of the resistance and beloved since we did segue into this portion of our service today with that particular piece of art on this day in particular one day after a mass protest at the irwin county detention center in defense of the lives of imprisoned immigrant women let me say this loud and clear never believe the white lie about black lives matter about the black lives matter movement leaving behind people of color it's just not true black lives matter leaders made up nearly the entire front line yesterday in osilla while following the lead of the majority mexican organizers it is never going to be black folks who fail to understand that none of us is free until we are all free. The art of the resistance. From the heart of a grieving black mother songwriter is what made this song happen. Somebody's hurting my sister and it's gone on far too long. It's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. I said, somebody's hurting my sister and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Yara Allen wrote that. Yara Allen is the Director of Cultural Arts and Theomusicologist for Repairers of the Breach. She's also active in the Moral Mondays movement and the Poor People's Campaign and the Black Lives Matter movement. And the first time she sang this song in public is a story I have shared with you all before. She was using the word brother instead of sister, and she was singing at a rally at an Appalachian mountain town in support of lost lives and families broken by the evils of the coal mining industry. Yara Allen is an artist who understands that her art of the resistance transcends any one movement, encompasses the whole human struggle, and is for the edification, education, and a healing balm for the spirit of all of Earth's creatures. And speaking of all of Earth's creatures, two weekends ago, I was able to join up with my local vegan meetup group and we created chalk art love notes and images all over the Decatur Town Square because the art of the resistance sometimes facilitates social interaction in safer, creative ways during a, a global pandemic. Yesterday, my friend Shelly, right here in Atlanta, created a stunning portrait of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who we've honored here already today, because sometimes the art of the resistance is a tool to cope with grief. I've watched my own loved ones come together and sing and clap and, and praise the God of their understanding as we buried our dead who we lost to this awful pandemic. Because sometimes the art of the resistance is making a joyful noise when joy is the last thing anyone would expect. Yesterday, as many of you know, I spent most of my day in Osceola, Georgia, on the grounds of the Irwin County Detention Center, inside the walls of which immigrant detainees with female bodies have been undergoing forced sterilization and other brutal medical malpractice. And although it was, it 
excuse me, it was impractical and inappropriate for me to spend any time getting permission to share images with you all. I will tell you that our Latinx neighbors came with resistance art. Sometimes the art of the resistance comes in the form of colorful traditional clothing, cardboard signs, decorated vehicles, musical instruments, and songs. Songs, most of them in Spanish, but the universal language of the melodies and the harmonies came through loud and clear and moved us all. Also yesterday, a friend and a colleague was in Washington, D.C., where memorials to Justice Ginsburg are popping up spontaneously as the mood of the town was quiet and somber, no chants, no gatherings, no displays of political stances even, because sometimes the art of the resistance is silently placing a bouquet of flowers and an LED candle on the steps of a building. Sometimes, like today, I mean, <laughs> the art of the resistance is creating a, a sermon that's really just a very short love letter to grieving women. I must and I want to carefully acknowledge that the legacy of fighting for women's rights by Justice Ginsburg and the current fight for the rights of the women in immigration detention are, in fact, inclusive of all women, cisgender, transgender, intersex, and also people with bodies that were assigned female at birth, although you may in fact be non-binary or a man. And so while saying clearly that not all women have wombs and not all womb having people are women, it is still appropriate today to use a little bit of incomplete shorthand and sing it again. Somebody's hurting my sister. And it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. Oh, it's gone on far too long. Somebody's hurting my sister. And it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Friends, I can't really talk to us for very long today, even if I wanted to, but I want to call us to action this week, today, if you can, in three small but significant ways. The first ones, the first one was suggested yesterday by immigrant leaders in Osceola on behalf of the women being forced into mass hysterectomies by Dr. Amin. We do not have to be patients of Dr. Amin, I learned this yesterday, to file a complaint directly with the American Medical Association with our concerns over his brutality and malpractice. I pass this along, the urging that I heard yesterday, I pass it along to you. Go to the American Medical Association website and file a complaint. If you forget Dr. Amin's full name, which I did not even speak, it is Mahendra Amin. If you forget that, it is also an easy web search. Someone will probably put that in the chat for me or right now, his full name. Uh, it's an easy web search since his name is prominent in the news right now. So that is our call to action number one that I invite you to, to participate in with me. File an AMA complaint saying that we won't be silent about mass sterilization. Not one more. This isn't new. We all know this isn't new. We have seen this and during the rise of fascist regime, regimes in our past, it must stop. It cannot go unchallenged. Now one more. Call to action number two. Inundate our senators with calls emails, letters, urging them to refuse confirmation of a Supreme Court nominee until after our presidential election. Folks, it's not political, it's moral. We can look back at the hypocrisy of how this has gone on in the past and how it becomes nothing but a political football, and it should not be. 
while it is a fine line always, this business of preaching about principles and not politics, I believe that this is firmly on the side of our principles. We who believe in freedom cannot rest when one of our greatest champions of fairness and equity has died and men in power want nothing more than to take us back a century or more in her absence. Please contact Senators Loeffler and Purdue, my fellow Georgians. And for those of you in different states, please contact your US senators as well. I know for some of you that will be Cruz and Cor Cornyn. Yeah, I believe I got that right. For some, it will be Durbin and Duckworth. I know that some of those names <laughs> inspire more confidence of a fair response than others. Pressure them anyway. Let your voice be heard anyway. We cannot be silent one more day. And third, this was to be a day of talking all about art. I had hoped earlier in the week that I'd feel like doing that a little bit more than I do right now, but here we are, and here it is, our third call to action of the week, and the one that I truly believe is at least as important as the other two. Make some art. I strongly suggest the small investment of sidewalk chalk if you don't already have it. If getting out and getting on the ground is a thing that you do, maybe that's not going to be the thing for you. Maybe you will call up a sister who is hurting and sing her a love song. Maybe you will write her a real paper love letter and send it to her via the US Postal Service. Maybe it will be an email or a text or a post with a poem on her social media. Maybe the art you make this week will come in the form of opening your mouth and singing to yourself alone in your house when it is the last thing you feel like doing. I don't feel like drawing rainbows on the sidewalk this week. I don't feel like making a joyful noise. I don't feel like dancing. I don't even feel like watching any of you do those things. Not right this minute anyway. Maybe you don't either. Most of the women you and I know are feeling downright gutted and maybe you're one of them. Which is precisely the situation Yara Allen is looking at at every protest at every public witness for justice events when she takes a breath and cries out, somebody's hurting my sister and it's gone on far too long and we won't be silent anymore. So in this high holy week for Judaism, may we take the time not only to mourn Justice Ginsburg, may her memory be a blessing, but to hold close our Jewish sisters and all of our sisters who are scared and grieving in this high holy week of Judaism. May we take time not only to mourn the losses of the women forced into mass sterilization in our immigrant detention centers, but hold close all of our immigrant sisters and all of our sisters who are scared and grieving. May we never feel too much despair to believe that the art of the resistance matters. Our hearts know better, and we know this in our hearts and our souls, when we consider the moments, perhaps even in this service today, that music, poetry, or visual images have moved us and inspired us to recommit to the fight for justice. We won't be silent anymore. We can't. I love you, in case you didn't know. And I'm gonna sing it, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna write poetry about it, I'm gonna make chalk art about it, I might even do an interpretive dance about it, but probably not. It's gonna get downright weird sometimes. I love you, rebelliously, radically, in the face of all the resistance. I'm gonna love you more creatively and more out loud than ever even when it gets weird. <laughs> I love you. There's nothing you can do about that. Somebody's hurting my sister 
and it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. It's gone on far too long. We're singing somebody's hurting my sister. And it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Wow. Thank you for that, Reverend Misha. Thank you very much. Now is the time for our offering. The offering that we take each Sunday is an opportunity to recommit to this place, to these people. Our offering is an affirmation, a yes. When we give, we say yes to something of value. With our gifts freely given, may we say yes to the values of this faith. Our offering will now be given and gratefully received. So great to see all your faces and thank you David Morgan for that great new video. Now please join me in the dedication of our offering to the work of this congregation which is weaving a tapestry of love and action. We dedicate our offerings and the best of who we are. Hello our final music selection today is presented by the 2019 Unitarian Universalist Music Ministers Conference Conferees Choir and Band. The conference was held at the First Universalist Church in Denver, Colorado. The song, What Does the Lord Require? was composed and conducted by the conference music clinician, Dr. Mark Miller. We hope you enjoy it as much as we did.
Yes, that was beautiful. Do justice, love, mercy, walk humbly. A message from our Hebrew prophet Micah in this Jewish High Holy Week. A timely word. Thank you for sharing that with us, Philip. Our benediction today is by the Reverend Tom Shade. My friends, there is a power at work in the universe. It works through human hands, but it was not made by human hands. It is a creative, sustaining, and transforming power, and we can trust that power in our lives. It will sustain us whenever we side with love, whenever we side with peace and justice, whenever we take a risk, trust in that power. We are together held by that power. Go in peace, go in power, go make some rebel art this week, beloveds. I love you. But really, don't go anywhere. Stick around for coffee hour after our postlude by our beloved Jim. <laughs>